This tutorial will walk you through one of the foundations of pottery, coil building. I will show you how to create a pot or a jug or a container out of clay that gets smaller or skinnier as it goes in. So think like a vase or a bottle. I will show you how to score, slip, and blend all your coils together, and I'll show you how to roll even and consistent coils. This is a must if you're learning how to work with clay, and it's a really great way to do hand building when you're creating clay not using a pottery wheel. I am using Amico low fire clay, but I've done this before with air dry clay, Play-Doh, and even homemade clay I made during quarantine. Once you have your clay, all you need is a basic set of pottery tools. So think something that you could pick up at any store. It doesn't have to be complicated. I mostly use my hands, um, but you do need a shish kebab stick or a fork or something to create your score marks. And I do prefer using some wooden. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button so you never miss an art tutorial. You always start by wedging your clay. You wedge to get out air pockets. Because you're going to be touching your clay a lot, wedge in your hand to create a shape similar to the shape you'll be working with. Then place it on the table and with both hands slowly roll from palm to fingertips, and I usually do this twice. When both hands can fit on your coil, start from the center and roll out. You'll notice it's fatter in the middle, so pay a little bit more attention there. Keep rolling in the same motion. You can see if it's too skinny, leave it alone. If it's a little too thick, roll it again and pinch it together if it starts to roll flat so that you kind of encourage the roundness of the coil and not just like a flat back and forth rolling motion. You can see my coil is getting pretty long and it's time to check. My index finger is my goal. My thumb is too thick, my pinky is too small as far as the width of my coil for this project. Notice if you do it too fast or with one hand, it's not a great technique because your goal is an even and consistent form to build a structure. I'm starting with a pinch pot. If you don't know how to make a pinch pot, click the link above and I'll walk you through step by step. I have a couple of different strategies with coil building and I like to first use the coil to measure and create little onion rings for my structure. So I pinch off what I need, I measure it on top of the pinch pot, and then I blend it together to create a onion ring looking shape that I'm going to stack and build. I like to do it this way because it allows the coil to dry out just enough so it's not smushy and I feel like I have a lot of control over the form of my um, vessel or whatever I'm creating out of clay. So you can see this is one that I've made before and I can really control if my clay is going in or out and how tall it's going to be. I'm using the rest of the coil that I made to make a third section. And so with that one coil that I made, I can make more than one trips around the pinch pot. So I can use that coil multiple times to make my little onion rings for my structure. If you're wondering why I sprayed that coil, I made that on a Friday and today when I'm making this video, it's a Monday. And so it was a little dry. So I sprayed it because I don't wanna waste it, but I have this fresh coil in front of me that I'm gonna continue making my consistent onion rings or circles that fit around my pinch pot. So it's certainly possible to save clay as long as it's stored in a bag. And this is just a coil that I had made with my classes last week. Again, didn't wanna waste it, so I'm spraying it to kind of rehydrate it so I can use it with my form. Well, I'm out of clay, so I'm going to clean my workstation and make some more coils. I like to roll coils directly on the table because when I use canvas, it moves and shakes. So although yes, I'm making a giant mess, it's not hard to clean and I just like a flat, even surface. So for me, a tabletop is the perfect way to roll coils. So this one's getting a little thin, so I'm gonna check. It does pass the test. It's a little thin, but I feel like it will work. And you can see it's not perfectly consistent, but it should do the job. So my goal here is to add, I don't know, maybe seven sections on my pinch pot. And my overall goal is to create a 
vessel or a jug that goes in as it goes up. And that is challenging. A lot of times when you're adding coils and you're blending them together, it's really easy to make this wide open shape and it's harder to kind of go in and make a closed shape. So every time I make an onion ring from this point, the width of the coil is not gonna change. So like the index finger will always be my unit of measurement for this, because I'm working really small. Hashtag public school budget. So the width doesn't change, but the diameter, the the that's the right word, right, math teachers? The diameter of the coil gets smaller and smaller and smaller as it goes up. See? So each coil is the same width, but I'm making it go in to create like a bottle shape. Very satisfying. So for now, I think I have enough coils. It's a little teeny tiny container, but it works for me. And now for the most important lesson of all, score, slip, and blend. Anytime you were working with clay and building a structure or adding new clay to another piece of clay, you always score, slip, and blend. What you see right now are score marks. And I am scratching into the clay score marks so that slip, which I'll show you what that is in a minute, can get down into the grooves and crevices and will act as the glue. You don't need perfect score marks. I tell my students to be aggressive. Now notice I'm not like stabbing my clay, the pinch pot's not destroyed, but look how little those lines are, okay? You need to make sure that you're pressing down into your clay enough that you're actually digging down into the surface. I always have students that poke little holes. That's really satisfying, but it's not what we're doing. So try this out. Put your fingers together and then try to pull. Now do this. Okay, so the score marks are opening up both of the clay surfaces, and then when you attach them, like I did my fingertips, they'll be really and truly stuck together and fused together. If you just put clay on clay, like I did the second time with my hands, you can just easily pull it apart. So with your first coil, you're going to put the same aggressive amount of score marks. Really dig into your clay. Now, if you destroy your clay and you make it a bunch of little pieces, you're being too aggressive. But if it looks something like this, great. Just make sure to pierce down into the clay so it's truly able to blend together. You're going to be doing this a lot because every piece of clay you add to each other, you will start with your score marks first. You must put score marks on both surfaces. Once you have done that, like so, you're ready for the slip. Slip is a combination of clay and water, and it acts as the glue. So I'm using a paintbrush. You could use your finger, you could squirt it right out of the container, and I'm patting it onto my score marks. The consistency here is a little too watery. I like to think of it, you're like painting with melted ice cream. So I made this slip this morning and it's not quite the right consistency, but you can see it's really getting down in the score marks and I'm patting it into them, not scraping it because I want the score marks to remain um, deep. Okay, here's the fun part. Take the other section and squeeze. Look at that slip getting in those score marks. You only have to put slip in one surface. If you put too much slip, you're gonna make a mud puddle. Look how satisfying that is. Go all the way around and make sure your two pieces are connected. The final step in attaching two pieces of clay is blending. As you can see with my finger, I am blending the two pieces together. This needs to be done on the inside and the outside of your coil pot. I like to use my hands for blending. My coil I made today is fresh clay, so it's really easy to blend. But if it's not, clay tools can really come in handy. This blending tool is doing a great job of erasing what I like to call the line of separation. So I'm using my hand and tools to blend the clay together. Because my pinch pot I made last week, and it's been in a bag, so it's not like dried out or anything, but the coil is really fresh, I'm kind of using that clay tool to make sure the seam is covered. This is also important to do on the inside. So scoring takes time, slipping, super easy, or I should say not slipping, adding slip, and blending is what you will be spending most of your time doing. 
You can be a perfectionist and make it super, super blended and smooth, but remember you're building a structure. So just like you wouldn't build a house and not nail down the boards, right? Or you wouldn't just stack bricks, you would add the mortar. It's the same thing when your score is slipping. Score, when you're, let me try this again, when you are doing the technique of score, slip, and blend. Now you repeat these steps over and over again. Anytime you are attaching two coils together or really you're attaching any two pieces of clay. I'm speeding things up. I'm going twice as fast as I actually went in real life. So if it looks like I'm spazzing out, you know, I sped things up. So just to repeat, you add score marks to the surface you're attaching on both sides. So you're doing it to your pot and you're doing it to each coil. Be aggressive enough with your score, be aggressive enough with your score marks so the slip can get into them and really blend together, but not so aggressive that you're like ripping and tearing your coils. You only need to add slip to one surface because you don't want to overdo it and make a mud puddle. And then you attach, make sure the slip gets in the cracks and crevices, and then it's time to blend, blend, blend. So anytime you attach two pieces of clay, these are the steps. And as you get more used to it, it goes quicker. As you get used to the clay tools, you'll find ones that you like. And this one is like really dirty. I should probably take my time and clean it. Um, and any extra clay you have, I always just put back in my slip container because remember, slip is just made of clay and water. Since I'm repeating the same exact steps, let's speed things up a little bit. When making a clay pot, you can totally smooth out every single coil. Another really cool style is letting each coil show. So what I'm doing with my blending tool here is I'm still blending them together. So there's no line of separation. You can't see the score marks. It's very securely blended. But I'm emphasizing that indention as I um, blend around so that each coil kind of has its own uh, shape. It makes me think of like a beehive and it's just a really great way to emphasize that you're using coils. So you didn't make this on a potter's wheel, it's hand built pottery using coils. So it just depends on what you like. If you want your coils to show and have that texture, awesome. You can make sure every time you add it, you just emphasize the indention or if you want to make it really smooth, use your hands or there's tons of clay tools, sponges, things that you can use to smooth it out. As you go in, it's important that you score, slip, and blend without changing the shape of the coils. So every time I add the coil, I'm not pinching it or pulling it. I'm trying to leave the top exactly the way I made it, which is why I like organi organizing my coils before I score, slip, and blend them. I feel like it gives me a little bit more control. So I'm gonna finish my clay pot using the coils that have dried out just a little bit and making sure that it slightly goes in. So you can see this coil is giving me a little bit of trouble. It's trying to break apart. And the easy way to fix this, blending is not gonna do it just by itself. You wanna add some score marks and add some slip to it, and that's like giving it surgery. That should fix any coil that is being stubborn. However, if it's your top coil, um, you might wanna remake it. So I'm not stressed because I'm adding another coil on top. So I've blended it together like where the seam is, and I'm also gonna stack another coil on top, which should take care of the top part or top surface area. To finish my coil pot, I'm just going to repeat these steps again, and although my coils are getting smaller, it's the same exact step. So it might go quicker since it's less surface area. So since we're repeating, let's go ahead and speed things up again. finished and the last coil is called the lip. So if you were drinking out of this, this is where your lip would go and that's going to be the last coil that you add. 
This is your showcase coil. So although every coil doesn't need to be perfect, the lip, the top coil, the one that everyone can see, that one should be really smooth, really consistent, and blended very well. So if you were making a bottle, this would be the top. So this one you wanna really pay attention to and make it your best coil. So be critical of this coil more than any of the others. And you can see, just like the rest, they're slightly going in as it goes up. And it really makes me think of a, bee, a beehive. Um, and I'm using my tool to really let that indention show up. So once you have all of your coils attached, you want to pay close attention to the textures and the surface of your coil pot. So be obsessive with smoothing and blending. You could play around with textures or carving. And I always like to make sure the shape is as circular as possible. Coil building makes really nice decorative pieces of pottery. You could also put a handle on it. You could make little mugs to go with it. You could use it as a planter or a flower vase but I'm going to be using mine to create a face jug. And if you've never heard of what a face jug is, click the link above. It is an awesome and very historical form of creating pottery. All done for now. And this will be a great base for my next project. Thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me. And if you're interested in more clay tutorials, check these out.